Before we talk about phagocytosis, let's get a reminder going for white blood cells. What you're seeing on the screen here, these are all white blood cells that you uh, were introduced to back when we were talking about blood. However, we didn't go into detail on any of these. We just kind of said that these are present in the blood. So let's take a look now in a bit more detail. Leukocytes, leukocytes are the white blood cells. And we're showing you the major types right here. Um, let's start with the neutrophils. The neutrophils are present all throughout the body. These are um, just immune cells that are always sort of there and ready to react if needed. Um, these are present in tissues as well as in blood. And what they do primarily is they're active against bacteria and fungi. So if, um, if those sorts of pathogens are detected, the neutrophils are the first things that are going to address it in some way. The eosinophils right here, eosinophils, these, um, sometimes these are present just in very low numbers. Oftentimes they're not needed in the body, but if there is a parasitic infection, like for example, tapeworm, then the eosinophils are going to, uh, their numbers are going to come up and they're going to work to address that issue. So these are primarily for dealing with parasites. The basophils, you can see another example of a granular white blood cell, by the way, um, these have granules inside and what those granules are storing is histamine for one thing. So basophils, these are cells that are important in initiating inflammation. They help facilitate inflammation to take place. We'll see those a little bit later. The lymphocytes, lymphocytes include things like B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, um, also natural killer cells. We'll be talking about these quite a bit when we talk about adaptive immunity. So we'll come back to that later on in the chapter. Um, these actually participate in both innate and adaptive immunity. They kind of have a role in each of those. Um, but we'll, we'll be, when we talk about adaptive immunity, we'll be looking at the production of antibodies specifically is what the B lymphocytes do. So come, we'll come back to these a little bit later on. The monocytes, monocytes are present in the blood However, they have this ability to squeeze out of the blood vessels and make their way into tissues. And once they leave the bloodstream, they can uh, become what we would call macrophages, um, also dendritic cells. These all come from monocytes. Um, and then those tend to arrive at sites of infection a little bit later than the neutrophils. So in terms of phagocytosis, Okay, some of these cells that you're looking at, some of them are capable of phagocytosis, others are not. So the ones that we're going to focus in on right now, since we're trying to talk about phagocytosis, we're going to focus in just on the neutrophils and the monocytes. These are cells that are capable um, of, of phagocytosis. So they can form those pseudopodia and actually engulf other things. That being said, Okay, there are other types of phagocytic cells as well. Certain organs um, in the body have phagocytic cells that are just kind of built in, sort of locked in place. So um, some examples of that in, would be in the liver particularly. The liver has to process a lot of pathogens and so it has its own special phagocytic cells right there that are called Kupfer cells. Kupfer cells? I'm actually not 100% sure what the correct pronunciation of that is. Um, but in any case, they're phagocytic cells and they really help to purify the blood from pathogens. So after a couple passes through the liver and the spleen, uh, blood is, is quite clean in most cases. The lungs? The lungs would be another site where we have to be able to deal with with pathogens. So that would be another example of a place where there are macrophages that are just always there present, ready to engulf pathogens as needed. Microglia, we mentioned microglia back when we were talking about the nervous system. Microglia hang out in the brain and help to um, facilitate the health of the brain. This is one of the things that they do. They're capable of, of um, phagocytosing foreign objects. One other type of cell that is important in the immune system, but it's not on this slide. I just want to mention it right now to, to introduce you to it, the mast cells. Mast cells are very important in immune responses. They're quite similar to basophils. They have granules um, inside and the contents is somewhat similar to what's in basophils. Um, mast, cell, mast cells are also important in the inflammatory response. We're going to see them later on in this chapter. So for now, just sort of introducing you to them. Okay, so let's come and focus in on phagocytosis again. So neutrophils and monocytes. Neutrophils arrive first, 
monocytes um, or macrophages arrive a little bit later. So phagocytosis, how is this initiated? Okay, it needs to be a specific event, right? This is something that needs to be specifically targeted towards the foreign object, the foreign pathogen. Um, so the way that this happens, neutrophils and monocytes, okay, let's just start in the bloodstream here. So we've got these cells that are flowing through a blood vessel and they make their way into a capillary, looks like we're dealing with here. We've got just a single layer, very thin walls. Um, and what's going to happen is up here, notice how there's some bacteria. So bacteria produce molecules, and some of those molecules might happen to diffuse over near the bloodstream. All right, so um, this molecule in yellow, this is the one that our white blood cells can recognize. So that, that's something that um, the white blood cell would bind to, and then once it's bound, that will help it, it uh, once it makes contact with the wall, um, it's going to just kind of stick there. And the way it's going to move is by rolling. Okay, so it will roll along the blood vessel wall um, until it finds an exit point. And what's going to happen is it will squeeze out really thin and make its way between two of the epithelial cells. So right, there's a gap, very small gap between these cells um, in the capillary wall and the white blood cell is able to squeeze through. That process is called extravasion. Um, it's leaving from the bloodstream out into the surrounding tissues. So it makes its way over and tracks down that bacteria. Um, and after that, it produces some pseudopodia, pseudopods to, to engulf the bacterium. One of two things will happen. Either these pseudopods will just kind of hold the bacteria still and the cell will release digestive enzymes onto it. Or the other possibility is that these pseudopods will actually engulf the bacteria and the bacteria might be taken internally and digested internally. Either one is possible. So either one is a possible outcome um, from this. In either case, those digestive enzymes that were stored inside of the white blood cell, those are used, um, the digestive enzymes are released to either carry out digestion internally in a vacuole or externally um, by releasing those enzymes into the ex uh, extracellular environment. So in the end, pathogen is digested, and job is done.